Hello and welcome back to Noclips Developer Breakdown, the show where we try and get a deeper understanding of how games are made by asking developers to break down their games as much as feasibly possible. In today's episode, we're talking to Ren Breyer and Tim Dawson of Witchbeam Games about their BAFTA award-winning Unbox Em Up Unpacking. Unpacking is a game where you follow a person through their life, unpacking boxes as they move from home to home. But this simple premise hides the complex nature of things under the hood. And today we're talking to Ren and Tim about everything from achieving that graphical style to sound effects, the game's subtle narrative, and even the cultural differences of where people like to put their shoes. All right, we have a lot of socks and toiletries to get through on this one. So let's start with something a little bit different, household items. I'm sure the idea for this could have been extremely broad. So how close is this version to what was originally conceived? It's relatively close to the original pitch, but at the same time, it's full of details that we only figured out later, which I think is how kind of a lot of game stuff works. So like, if you went back in time and listened to us describe what we thought the game was going to be, it goes, oh yeah, that matches up. But there's like so much, so many things that didn't come online until later. There are uh, more than a thousand different items in the game, and each one of these has individual sprites and often also rotations. So uh, most items have like uh, two, at least two. And sometimes you've got all four rotations, and then sometimes there's even extra rotations for like uh, hanging or um, a lot like going on the wall, and then uh, you've got books which can stand upright, and they just stand upright on on shelves uh, that are either left facing or right facing, and so you need to show the front or the back of the book. Was there ever any issues with like making things where people didn't really understand what they were, or that they weren't readable, or that maybe certain cultures taught them them differently? Well, to me, the funniest is when Americans put the electric kettle on the stovetop. <laughs> <laughs> I think shoes um, for like Japanese people was the biggest one. We don't have like a shoe rack at the entrance generally. We do just in one level. And so they're like, well, what do I do with these shoes? Like, you're not letting me put them where, where I normally put them. And they're like, this is the, the places that you allow like are not acceptable in my culture. There was also some interesting uh, uh, things with for instance, the ball in the kids' room, um, because we never display a label anywhere, we literally don't have to own up to whether we're calling it a soccer ball or a football. <laughs> so we've got some built-in cultural uh, flexibility there. The uh, the toilet paper can go on the... Uh, in the toilet paper rack. Yeah. So uh, can you go uh, yeah, down, scroll them up? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I could just stick them in there. Of course. Yeah, but also you can put one. There you go. Can you rotate you it? Oh, you can rotate yeah. it. You can rotate it. Of course. You are the best people. Pre the previous game I did was a saw Android Cactus and that was like high performance. Uh, it ran well on a Switch. I thought that coming on and doing a bunch of sprite stuff would be, you know, a walk in the park and a vacation. Yeah, you were like, how hard could it be? <laughs> but it turns out that if you have a 3D enemy that clips through a wall for one frame at 60 frames per second, nobody notices. But if you have a plate that clips through a wall, everyone notices and they just sit there and they look at it and they point and it just stays there clipping through the wall. So it's actually way more important to get that right than, than any moment to moment in a, in a traditional action game. We actually like put off doing anything with the story um, for quite a while because we wanted to get the mechanic right because if it doesn't feel good to unpack things then what's the point of this game? One of the si first systems I actually had up and running was a grid system um, so you, you, we could define a grid and then you had items that could be various X and Y sizes that could snap to that grid. And that stayed fairly similar, but everything else got tweaked and massaged and improved. Uh, there's a lot of logic to make sure that when you select something, it, it generally selects what you think you're gonna select, which is how you make it feel intuitive, but under the hood there's doing like a bizarre amount of like sorting and selecting and stuff to kind of make up for that bias. Uh, the grid, we tried to make it feel really intuitive by making the items um, fill up as much of uh, their grid spot as possible. So like we could have gone with boxy items, in which case like it would have been even more obvious where the grid was, but the items need to be recognizable and the items need to be like, yeah, the right size to fill up their grid. So if uh, the artist drew an item and it looked, say, 
a little bit too uh, small for its bounding box because they all under the hood have bounding boxes. The nail clippers, um, which are a very small item, but the nail clippers in our game are 10 centimeters long because that's our minimum unit. Uh, and if you look at it, in, if you look at the scene in 3D, it looks bizarre because everything is stacked in a really strange way, but it all works. <laughs> when, when we turn on uh, 3D in Unity, it looks like the scene exploded. Where it gets really fun is drawers, and um, because Drawers have all these weird rules where you can put items in a drawer and then you can open a drawer and an item could be under the drawer, unless it's tall enough, in which case it has to be in front of the drawer. And uh, and then when it gets really, really complicated, you have, say, a toothbrush can be put in a cup. Um, and that's using, that's using masks, but drawers are also using masks. And so there's actually a point where I pulled apart Unity's uh, masking system for sprites and figured out they were using stencil buffers in the shader. And so I had to write my own version of that so that I could do a stencil buffer which wrote to the stencil buffer, drew the toothbrush, and then unwrote the stencil buffer so it didn't mess up the drawers in case you put the toothbrush in front of a drawer. <laughs> like so, or in front of a drawer. Yeah, yeah. But this is a simple game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was that was all thanks to our um, audio director and composer uh, Jeff and Dyke, first person to come onto the project after me and Rem. And when he was thinking about what he was going to do with unpacking to kind of make it make it cool, like at first he set out to uh, record literally every item, like phys actual physical item, and just go out and get one. Yeah, and so he was he started off by just kind of brute forcing it, just going if it's a if it's a cup, I'm going to record a cup. On every different surface type, and some variants of it on every sur surface type to get to get something like that. Uh, eventually, it ended up becoming a bit slightly more of a category thing. There's some things that are like defined as this is a, a large clunky object. This is a yeah. This is a large soft. This is large hard. Things like that. Each room has its own um, yeah. reverb value, so you can hear when you place something on tiles in the bathroom, you'll hear it with a slight echo and stuff like that. That it would sound differently even if you placed it on tiles in another room type. So what is it exactly about this unpacking game that has so many people talking about it? Well, one important element is the subtle narrative which ties each house together. You follow a person as they move from home to home over the course of their lives, so the player is steeped in all the drama and life choices that those moves reflect. So where exactly did this narrative come from and how critical is it to the overall design of the game? And don't forget, if you'd like to watch the extended cut of this and every other interview on Developer Breakdown, head over to patreon.com slash noclip and support our work to get access to those extended interviews and loads more. All right, back to the unpacking. Something I kind of like wanted to emphasize early on when we were even just kind of brainstorming was this idea of um, there's something fun about going through people's stuff. From the very beginning, we knew that this would be uh, a good way to tell uh, a narrative through items. Like we, we thought, you know, you can tell a lot about a person from the items that they own. Although initially we were thinking, oh, we could have like a bunch of separate rooms that belong to different people. You could learn uh, about each one of them from the items that you unpack. And we were like, oh, maybe we could even do a procedural and all this. But then we thought, what if it's just the one person and you go through through every move in their life with them? And it just moving lent itself really well to a story like that because moving so often coincides with big life moments like story beats, essentially. We tried to pick these these kind of moments in life that would be kind of interesting or familiar. People would be able to identify, oh yeah, moving out to, to going to college or university. You, you move in with a boyfriend, you uh, have someone move in with you. So that one, obviously based on uh, uh, Tim moving in with me, which was like the, the original inspiration for the game, just like the intimacy of helping someone unpack, which really is, is what you do in this entire game. You're helping someone unpack and it's a very kind of intimate action. Let's talk about one of the moments then that uh, came up for me. The moment where you're unpacking and there's nowhere to put your degree. <laughs> um, that was, yeah, so that, that was, we had a whole bunch of ideas. I think I think that spun out of uh, 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 one of Ren's ideas to be that 
you would have a um, an, some artwork that yeah. you, could, you couldn't hang up, and it would kind of be re reflecting the idea of like your art side being suppressed or being kind of held back. Yeah, we came up with the diploma item for the third level because it felt like, okay, she finished university, so now she has a diploma and she can proudly hang it up and it's a nice beat. And then as soon as we came up with that item, we were like, okay, that's the one that you have to, to hide away. The, 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 the detail I wanted to mention before in the kitchen, uh, if you zoom in on the, on, so the, we were talking about like the boyfriend's relationship with art. And so if you move up a bit and have a look at the, uh, so he's got this big picture in the kitchen uh, and, it's, and it's there for design reasons to take up that wall space so you don't have anywhere to hang your diploma. Um, and on, on the surface, it looks like a kind of an appreciation of art or at least graphic design. But my favorite detail is if you zoom in on the bottom right cor uh, corner, you can see it's dinged up from where the cupboard, uh, from where the fridge opens. Because the artist we're working with was like, if we make the picture go all the way that, that wide, it, it could get hit by the fridge. Yeah, it's like it, it's, it kind of it paints this portrait, and that, and I think that's the whole the whole uh, thrust of the game and the thrust of the storytelling is that we're we're trying to create richness with these characters, like the housemates, the main character, the the partners, like everything it's a, is a bit open to interpretation. Yeah, yeah, we're not trying to say this is a bad guy or a good guy. It's like this is a guy. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Something that initially we were worried would be a weakness of the game was that like you've got a story about a specific character but it, it's also a game about self-expression where you're um, learning about this character through your items but you're also trying to decorate the, uh, the level how you like it. And so we had some concerns of like would this be a conflict where uh, it would bother people and so it ended up, yeah, I, lo I love how that ended up being a strength and it just makes the story richer um, without us having to actually put that in there. Like people put in their own story, their own rules. It's, it's great. Environment wise, there are 35 uh, different rooms in this game and they're all bespoke. They're all like entirely handmade. We, we always planned a kind of traditional escalation so like each each level is supposed to be kind of more complicated than the last, with the exception of uh, the moving back in with the parents. I think is like a, a downbeat, but otherwise each level gets kind of bigger and more uh, complex. It was uh, definitely tricky sometimes to to keep things like always fresh and interesting. Uh, I remember with the house level, um, the biggest struggle was the closet because uh, there is an entire room that's a walk-in closet. And I was like, how do I keep this engaging? In that room, when you start it, like the boxes block up, I think, all the drawers. So we let you hang stuff first, and then uh, slowly you discover the drawers, and then you're like, oh, I can place stuff in drawers now. So it's like always, always building in escalations and always building in like kind of a, a narrative and a through line uh, for people to follow. I was trying to understand why the levels didn't feel like pictures. It felt still, but it didn't feel static, if that makes sense. Is there some sort of change in the sunlight happening as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah we have time of day. Um, so e each level has a concept of time, and the time advances as you take items out of boxes. Because we had this idea that uh, we didn't want you to feel rushed by the level becoming night and you feeling like you took too much time. Yeah, basically, like, the important thing about unpacking, like, making it feel relaxed and, and zen and all that, we don't want the player to feel uh, rushed or like they're um, failing or, or, you know, going too slowly. So we were like, what if time advances based on the player's progress rather than based on, on real time or anything like that? And so here the, the cars um, become fewer uh, <laughs> yeah. as it gets later and later at night. I think the parallax is also a big part of that. It just, it's subtle, but it gives you a sense that you're not just anchored to a screen. Yeah, that was, that was kind of one of my systems where I was trying to think about what can, can we do to kind of give you that sense of, of time passing and, and time of day. I think both of our backgrounds kind of make us uh, very inclined to do this sort of thing. Like, uh, so my background is actually in mobile games um, where often there's one mechanic, but you need it to be really good. And I am a, a UI artist and, and UX designer. Um, those, those are some of my strengths. So user experience is so important to me and like having 
good feedback on everything and having everything make sense and feel intuitive. And then Tim. Yeah, so I, my background's a character animator turned programmer for some reason. Um, and so working on a game with no characters to animate um, and also no 3D, um, I had to amuse myself with, so if you look at like any time a drawer or a door opens, um, they have a little ease in and ease out, like the drawers have a tiny overshoot. And it's just, it's just trying to make that feel nice, right? It's, I know, because as a character animator, it's all about trying to make, especially gameplay animation, you're all about trying to have the player's will reflected. And so that was really important. Like everything in this game needs to feel snappy and immediate, but also feel like a little bit of a flourish. I'd say game feel is like your bread and butter, right? Like um, as an, uh, an animator turned programmer, it's like, what you kind of think about most when you make games is like making them feel good, right? Yeah. I feel like with you, one of the things that I can always trust most with the game is that you will make it feel right. Massive thanks to Ren and Tim for talking to us about the design of Unpacking and thank you to you for watching our show Developer Breakdown. This is our second episode, we have another one coming up real soon with Rafael Colantonio all about Weird West so make sure you hit that subscribe button, throw us a like and if you have any suggestions please stick them in the comments. See you next time.